It says it's setting up. We're loading. So let's give it a moment. It appears on my phone. It says live on Facebook. It's kind of cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There we All go. Right. Hello and welcome to our 22nd Reach Out and Connect workshop. Uh, my name is Kristen and I'm with Reach Out and Read and we also have Carrie. Hi everyone, Carrie with Reach Out and Read. And Michael. Hi everybody, Michael, Reach Out and Read. And then my dad gave our trusty translator and wonderful volunteer. All right, so tonight <laughs> is called Singing Our Way Through Quarantine. Um, Singing with young children is really just as important as talking um, and reading with them. In some respects, it has even more cognitive benefits. Studies have found relationships between rhythm and language abilities, attention, development, hearing acuity, and even social interactions. So singing, music, amazing. Music can also improve math skills. Um, when we hear music, we rock our babies, or maybe we even rock our bodies, we sway back and forth, we clap along, we even look toward the source of the sound. These responses are reactions to musical elements such as spin beat, rhythm, melody, um, all of which are reflect mathematical concepts like one-to-one -one correspondence and patterns. So who knew that uh, music and singing, very important for developing these early math skills. Music is also a really great way to connect with children who have autism or who are developmentally delayed. Um, music encourages communicative behavior and can, can encourage interaction with others, which is something that children with autism uh, sometimes have difficulty with. Instead of using words to communicate, they can use a range of musical activities like singing, playing instruments, improvising, and listening to music instead uh, to communicate with. So we're going to dig into some more musical, musical activities and benefits of singing to children at three different ages. All right. Dad? Okay. Bueno, buenas noches. Kristen nos da la bienvenida a todos. Y nos introduce al taller número 22 esta noche de Reach Out and Connect, en el que ella va a hacer nuestro camino cantando a través de la cuarentena. En, en este taller um, vamos a hablar acerca de cantarle con los niños y qué tan importante es esto. En ciertos aspectos es muy importante en el proceso de, de aprender, uh, especialmente los beneficios de, del aprendimiento. Ella uh, dice que estudios han mostrado la relación entre los ritmos y las habilidades de la lengua, la atención, el desarrollo, la habilidad de oír y las interacciones sociales. La música también puede uh, mejorar las uh, habilidades matemáticas. Uh, cuando uh, nosotros oímos música y uh, arrullamos a los bebés y les cantamos, uh, ellos siempre van a estar mirando hacia el origen del sonido. Y esta es, es una relación, es una reacción a la respuesta del instrumento musical o también de un uh, pulso, pulso estable, de un, de un ritmo que sea estable o una melodía y que al mismo tiempo también reflectan conceptos de matemática correspondientes a unos modelos. La música también es muy buena para conectar los niños que tienen altismo o que tienen algún problema en el desarrollo. La música les ayuda a comunicarse y um, aprovechen para que haya una interacción con los otro, otras personas o socialmente. Que especialmente los niños que tienen autismo uh, tienen problemas 
en, en relacionarte ¿sí? en la parte social, ¿no? Entonces la música puede ayudar mucho. Um, en cambio de usar palabras, ellos pueden utilizar un rango de actividades musicales, como cantando o jugar con instrumentos o improvisar o sencillamente <coughs> oír música para comunicarse. La terapia, la música como terapia es también usada como una herramienta para enseñar. Por ejemplo, uh, escribir palabras acerca de un comportamiento especial, en el, como en el caso de tomando diferentes turnos, o uh, el cantar ciertas, ciertas palabras o ciertas letras que tienen una melodía Um, la idea de que el niño podría ser mejor en enfocar cierta uh, informa información y en el sentido de hablar también. Entonces vamos a, a, a ver un poquito más uh, en profundo cómo estas uh, actividades musicales pueden beneficiar a los niños en las diferentes edades. Right. Um, so as we said, we're going to go through some different age groups um, of children and talk about the different skills that you can develop by introducing music and singing with your child at that age, as well as some specific examples of activities that you can do with your um, child at that age that uses music and promotes those early literacy and math skills um, as they develop their brains. So uh, for music activities for babies, um, we're talking babies, we're talking like birth through about a year old. Um, some of the skills that this develops, first of all, is just bonding. So there is incredible bonding, a warmth and a primal response to singing to a baby that is critical during this um, special time of attachment development. And the act of singing to your child emotionally settles the parents and caregivers as well as the child. Um, there is a thing called synchronicity where a baby and the parent end up actually in this emotional space um, through that lullaby or the singing process. Um, another skill that this develops is transitions. So babies feel safe when their life is predictable. So using a song to symbolize that transition, like a song for waking up, a song before you go to bed, um, and other routine transitions and activities helps them to know what's coming next and helps to soothe the baby if the baby might be upset about something. Something familiar, a familiar tune that they're used to, all helps with those um, times of transition. Um, another cool skill that you can develop is by using your child's name as you're singing songs. So a baby can actually learn their name by hearing it in songs. So if you have a song that you like singing, try substituting your baby's name for other words in the song so they can hear their name over and over again. Now, my example for this, I don't have a baby to sing to, but I do have a dog and she's very cute as well. And so whenever she's getting her hair cut, she does not like getting her hair cut. And so in order to try to soothe my dog, I will sing a song. Um, uh, it's the tune of Clementine. So her name is Ava, we call her Avery. So I will sing, oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Avery. And I think that soothes my dog. I don't know if there's studies about that, but there are studies about actual children. So we really encourage to singing your baby's name in the songs or your dogs, you know what? I think there should be a study on that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, learning new words. Also, when, you're ba when you hold up a stuffed dog, <laughs> to your baby about that dog, the baby learns to associate the name with the toy that you're, that you're holding in front of them. Um, so when you sing about parts of the body, you kiss your baby's feet or tickle their tummy, they'll actually learn these new words. Um, and then our example of an activity is singing a lullaby before bed. Again, this is a time of transition. It's a time for bonding. Um, lullabies are more than really just singing to the baby. There is such an incredible positive impact on both the parents and the child. And as we previously mentioned, this is a great bonding time with your young child and can help soothe the trans smooth the transition from daytime to nighttime. So we'll translate this and then we'll show a really, really cute video of how lullabies and music um, soothe young children. 
Ok, so, now Kerry nos habla de actividades musicales con, uh, para los bebés de un año, que tengan un año de viejitos. Uh, la primera actividad uh, que ella dice es que uh, puede usarse como una oportunidad de unirse, de vincularse con ellos. Uh, ella dice que hay una uh, vinculación increíble y, y que es muy calorosa <coughs> y que es una respuesta primitiva al cantar cuando se le canta a los niños. Y que es muy crítica en el desarrollo del, de los niños. Um, el acto de cantarle a los niños um, uh, emocionalmente les da una calma, ¿no? Uh, cuando los padres o, o, o los niñeros o la gente que se encarga a los niños canta. Uh, uh, ella menciona que hay una actividad de sincro, sincronicidad en donde uh, los niños y los padres aparecen en un espacio <coughs> emocional. Otra actividad es de transiciones, donde los niños se sienten muy seguros cuando la vida enfrente de ellos es muy pre previsible. Por ejemplo, como cantarles una canción cuando se levantan o cuando se van a dormir o en ciertas actividades que son rutinas del día. Así a ellos les ayuda a de alguna manera pasar el día, ¿no? Ahora, la siguiente actividad es cantar con, con los nombres. El, los bebés aprenden a cantar uh, canciones uh, por medio de solamente oírlas, ¿no? Por lo que no hablan todavía. Y ella dice que, es, que se recomienda que re, reemplacen el nombre del, del, del bebé en la canción. Así ellos se acostumbran a oírlo una y, una, una y otra vez y otra vez. Ahora, Cantar canciones de cuna es, es muy importante también. Es una actividad muy buena. Ella dice que estas canciones, al irse a, a, a dormir, son mucho, mucho más importantes de lo que tú piensas y que, tienen un, y que crean una actividad, un impacto muy positivo en ambos, en, el, en los padres y en los niños. Y como ella dice, que se mencionó anteriormente, crean una un vínculo que es uh, muy importante ¿no? para los niños. Especialmente ese, esa transición de durante el día y que se pasa a la noche. Ahora, aprendiendo otras palabras o nuevas palabras es una actividad importante. Y el ejemplo que ya dice es como cuando tienes un... Una, una, un muñeco, ¿no? O una muñeca um, uh, que sea así o que pueda ser de, de un animal, pero que sea un, uh, así, un muñeco, ¿no? Uh, puedes que <coughs> tengas um, una manera de aprender uh, cosas relacionadas y, y que sean relacionadas a este muñeco que puede ser un animal o puede ser una persona um, <coughs> viva. Y así ellos se se pueden reconocer con estas canciones. Ahora, cuando tú les cuentas uh, acerca de ciertas partes del, del cuerpo o les das besos o les haces cosquillas o les consientes las piernas, en todas estas actividades ellos aprenden nuevas palabras. We're going to the video quickly. And we would encourage you to use words in your lullabies, but this was such a cute video that we couldn't, um, we couldn't miss the opportunity to show you um, the power of music and young children. Can you hear? A little bit, okay.
I don't know about you, but I'm tired now. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's learn about toddlers now. I was just going to say the same thing, Carrie. I was drifting off just like the, just like the baby. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm back. All right. So. I will be following the same sort of outline um, as Carrie had for the baby section. So we're gonna talk about what skills um, your toddler will develop through um, you engaging in musical activities with them. And then one example of an activity that you can engage with, with your toddler. So just first off, the skills. So your kids are growing and learning new skills as they hear you sing and engage with the music along with you. So here are a few of those skills. Firstly, language. Language is in and of itself musical. And so when you sing and speak, your young child learns about words, language, and communication. Through your singing, your baby's language comprehension begins and continues as they reach toddler age where their vocabularies are growing by the day, literally. The next skill that your toddler will develop is rhythm and rhyme. So as we know, music includes rhythm and rhyme, again, part of our language. So toddlers are beginning to recognize rhymes and rhythms and songs that you sing together. This helps the toddler form new sounds that they have not made yet. And those sounds compose words ultimately. And lastly, listening skills. So like reading, singing is an activity that requires listening. It's another opportunity for your child to begin to understand language and feelings expressed through language and sing play. So one great activity that you can engage with, the, with your toddlers is dance parties. And I was fortunate enough to have these growing up every Friday night with my family. So it was something I always look forward to, great memories. Um, and so we, we would do exactly this. We would play some kid-friendly music and, and really just move to the beat. I'm sure I was not doing great back in the day, but it doesn't matter. Just clapping the rhythms together or stomping to the beat with your feet and just moving to the music. So if the music is fast, speeding up, and if the music is slow, moving more smoothly and slowly. So you could even do a freeze dance when uh, the music stops, just stopping. Um, and, and even just using scarves to move high and low and explore the space around you. So all of this is gonna help your, your toddler develop those three skills that we've highlighted above. So I will turn it over to Gabe. Okay, now Michael nos habla de actividades musicales los niños de uno a los tres años. Um, <clears throat> Cuando los niños están aprendiendo nuevas habilidades, así como ellos uh, te oyen cantar y se comprometen con, uh, con ciertas canciones para cantar contigo. El lenguaje es una expresión musical uh, y cuando tú lo utilizas para hablar, tu niño aprende palabras de la, de la lengua. Y también a comunicarse. A, a través de cantando, el, el niño aprende también mucha comprensión. Y también lo utilizan para que ellos se vuelvan sociables, ¿no? Um, ahora, el ritmo y el rimar uh, es una parte muy, muy importante de, de la, del, del lenguaje también. Por lo que ellos empiezan a reconocer ciertos ritmos y pueden empezar a cantarlos juntos. Esto también les ayuda a los niños a aprender nuevos sonidos que ellos no, no, no habían aprendido hasta ahora. Ahora, las habilidades de oír, como, le, como leer, cantar es una actividad que, re, que requiere oír, o sea que es otra oportunidad para que tu niño empiece a aprender <coughs> otras palabras en la, en, en la lengua en la que ellos hablan y eh, aprenden a expresar <coughs> ciertos sentimientos a través de, de, de las palabras o a través de cantar. Ahora, hacer fiestas de, de bailar <coughs> es, una, es una buena, uh, muy, muy, muy buena actividad para los niños. Así de, tú puedes tocar una música es que sea amigable a un movimiento y a un ritmo. Ahora ellos pueden aplaudir los ritmos y uh, también seguirlos con, 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 con las piernas, ¿no? Uh, el ritmo. 
oh, también pueden empezar a bailar, ¿no? Moverse con, 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 con estos ritmos de una manera un poquito más rápida, un poco más despacio. Ahora, si la, uh, si la música es despacio y suave, ellos aprenden también a, a, a moverse de una forma de, despacito y, y, y muy suave, ¿no? Ahora, hacer la, el, la, el baile de, en que se congelan, donde ellos se paran los movimientos um, muy rápido, es, es una muy buena um, actividad también. Ahora, usar bufandas o, um, para que ellos se muevan hacia arriba o hacia abajo, um, les ayuda a explorar el, el mundo alrededor de ellos también. Ahora Michael nos va a hacer un, un YouTube, una demostración. <coughs> I'm going to get the translate part up. So this is a video of a music therapist actually working with a bunch of young children and she is using scarves and they have a couple awesome tips for us. So let me get the subtitles up and we'll be ready. The next thing I like to do with scarves is explore beat keeping. So you can do this with two hands. It's good for our bilateral development, uh, but you can do a bunch of different sort of motions and you can do them uh, at different speeds or tempos. Uh, Mulberry bush is a great choice. Oh, this is the way I bounce my scarves. I bounce my scarves. I bounce my scarves. This is the way I bounce my scarves so early in the morning. This is the way I wave my scarves. I wave my scarves. I wave my scarves. This is the way I wave my scarves so early in the morning. This is the way I circle my scarves. I circle my scarves. I circle my scarves. This is the way I circle my scarves so early in the morning. This is the way I scrunch my scarves. I scrunch my scarves. I scrunch my scarves. This is the way I scrunch my scarves so early in the morning. This is the way I throw my scarves, I throw my scarves, I throw my scarves. This is the way I throw my scarves so early in the morning. Next thing I like to do with scarves, particularly as the kids get older, is explore the shapes and the colors of the scarves. And we can do this in a variety of ways, but we can also do it so that we promote some bilateral development. So in this case, I have a red square in front of me. I'm going to take my bottom two corners of my square. I'm going to fold them up into a rectangle. My rectangle is a little big, so I'd like to fold it in half by taking the bottom two corners and folding them up one more time. I have a nice small rectangle now. I'm going to take my bean bag. Bean bags come in a variety of shapes and sizes and colors and materials. Uh, in this case, I just happen to have a green circle. I'm going to put it right in the middle. And then I'm going to use two hands. I'm going to pick it up on either side for my bilateral development. I'm going to try to rock my bean bag back and forth. Any song works once again, but uh, in this case, I'm going to use a Japanese lullaby called Sakura. Do, do, do. Let's move on to our last age group music activities for preschoolers around the ages of three to five. Hey, can you guys see me? Yeah. All right, great. I am back. Sorry, having all sorts of fun technical issues today. Um, so very excited to talk about musical things for preschoolers. Um, so preschoolers, uh, three to, about three to five years old. Um, at this age, your child's vocabula vocabulary is really flourishing. Um, they're learning all sorts of new words every day, um, all of the time. So while you sing with your preschooler, you're really introducing even more new vocabulary words. Um, it also helps your child sound out the words. Um, so for this, we're gonna do a little bit of a game and I'm going to at least make Carrie and Michael play. 
Um, so this is one of my favorite things to do. And I used to do this while training children's librarians. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to say the itsy bitsy spider. We are not going to sing the itsy bitsy spider. All right. Are you ready? One, two, three. The itsy, the itsy bitsy, bitsy spider, spider went up, up the, the water, water spout. spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider oh, out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. How did that feel? It felt pretty boring. <laughs> boring, weird, awkward. Um, I feel like I'm very much used to singing that song. Um, so in the same places I would do singing it, I breathed in the so. And it's hard not to do that because uh, you're so used to singing it. All right, so now we're going to sing it. Ready? One, two. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. All right, how did it feel that time? More normal. Yeah, more normal, get my thumbs up. Um, so it's a lot easier. But the reason we did that is, so do you see how singing actually slowed the pronunciation of words down? We weren't saying the itsy bitsy spider, we sang the itsy bitsy spider. So we're actually breaking up the words into syllables. Um, so singing, this is a perfect example, shows you um, it helps your child learn how to sound out the words and to say the words. So not only you might be teaching new vocabulary, you're actually teaching them how to say. Um, this is also called developing their phonological awareness for a technical term. Another thing you're working on is call and response. Um, sometimes it's also called an echo. Um, when part of the song is repeated, um, like the song Down by the Bay or Boom Chicka Boom, um, call and response can be a useful teaching tool as it really gives your preschooler a chance to listen, imitate, um, explore the voice and gain confidence in the singing. Um, so they repeat the words. You say something and then they say something back to you. Uh, also a lot of fun, gets everybody involved. Um, so a couple of things um, for recommendations on activities. Um, family, it's fun for the whole family. Um, singing is a great way to involve older siblings as well as grandparents or aunts and uncles, whoever is there. Um, singing and playing together uh, can really be a family fun activity that brings everyone closer together and lots of fun memories. Just like Michael shared, he said he had every Friday night had dance parties. I mean, come on. This is good memories, good fun. Um, and I will say, even with my dad here, my my parents threw some some good uh, toddler dance parties too. So uh, <laughs> it was also pretty much only the classic rock music and Nat King Cole, um, <laughs> and some salsa in there too. Um, another fun thing to do is actually put on a show. Um, so you can use finger puppets or stuffed animals or make your own puppets. Um, and act out a favorite song or a dance, um, dance to a favorite tune. I feel like this is super popular too right now with social media. There's all sorts of fun dances out there that you can learn and sing uh, and do together. Um, or if your little one loves to play act like so many preschoolers do, encourage them to dress up and imagine themselves as a character and then they can come up with their own song. It's fun too if you come up with your own song together um, it gets silly very quickly, which makes it a lot of fun. And then the previous video was a uh, music therapist. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about music therapy. Um, music therapy is used as a teaching tool. 
Um, for example, a music therapist might write lyrics about a specific behavior, uh, like turn taking. Um, the therapist thinks the lyrics to the melody of a song the child knows well, like this is the way we wash our hands, wash our hands, wash our hands. This is the way we wash our hands for 20 seconds. Um, so something like that. So the tune is already very familiar, but you're changing the lyrics. Um, and the idea behind this is that a child might better be able to focus on the information as it's sung rather than spoken. Um, so another example we have of this is the cleanup song, which I feel like um, we all know quite well, but we're gonna play you a quick clip. Okay, now Krista nos habla de actividades para los niños preescolares que son de tres años a los cinco años. Um, introduciéndoles nuevas palabras es importante a esta edad. Y así el vocabulario de ellos puede florecer muchísimo. Um, los sonidos también les ayudan a ellos a reconocer palabras y aprenderlas, ¿no? Principalmente. Ahora, el primer ejemplo que ella dice aquí es cantar. O mejor dicho, ella dice que solamente se van a decir las palabras sin cantarlas, sin el ritmo de ellas. Ahora, cuando esto ocurre, ella dice que esto es más o menos uh, difícil, ¿no? Por lo que no se puede seguir un ritmo. Y uh, un poquito raro. Ahora, después ella viene y canta la canción con un buen ritmo. Ahora, ella dice que esta es muy bueno porque es mucho más fácil. Y les, eh, eh, se, la pronunciación se puede ser mucho mejor, puede ser un poco más despacio. Y las palabras se separan en, en, en sílabas. Y así su niño puede atender, puede aprender mucho mejor estos sonidos. Um, esto se llama cómo desarrollar una atención uh, fonológica. Ahora, el, el llamar y el responder también a veces tiene un eco. Y esta es una parte de la canción que se dice, se dice re, repetitivamente. Como una canción que ella tra, uh, uh, introduce aquí que se llama uh, <coughs> Abajo por el bebé. O una canción en inglés que se llama Boom Chica Boom. Estas son canciones que llaman y responden. Y utilizan unas herramientas muy buenas para aprender. Y te da al niño la oportunidad de, de oír, imitarlos y al mismo tiempo explorar con la voz de ellos mismos. Así ellos ganan mucha, um, um, seguridad en ellos mismos en el cantar. Ahora, otra actividad es tener o divertirse con la familia. Ya dice que cantar es una de las actividades muy buenas para envolver otros hermanos y como y también los los, los abuelos. Um, esto puede ser una actividad familiar que es muy buena y que uh, también trae a la familia más la pone muy muy mucho más junta o la ayuda a vincularse mejor y también les da unas uh, memorias muy divertidas. ¿no? Ahora hacer un un show, ¿no? Es como uh, usar los, uh, las marionetas o los uh, animales que están rellenos y, uh, y hacer los que ellos uh, hagan tus canciones favoritas o, tus, uh, o que bailen de una forma en que a ti te guste. Um, ahora, Hacer que, esto, que los niños se, se, se vistan para la ocasión es muy importante porque les ayuda a desarrollar la imaginación y también les ayuda a que ellos uh, aprendan sus propias canciones, ¿no? Ok, Kerry. All right. Let's watch our last video we have. Um, as we talked about music being uh, a tool to talk about life skills and one of the life skills I know I had cleaned um, growing up was clean up 
and Barney was a huge part of that. So I bet he's part of a lot of people's um, life skills training as well. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean He modulated for us. All right, let's talk about some resources that we have for you now. Um, so the Musical Instrument Museum is has a great playlist of tutorials for musical activities with young children. All these links are in our comments description on Facebook or um, in the description below, you can find them. Uh, there's also fun ac music activities for preschoolers that has <laughs> fun musical activities. Um, and this includes some that we've already mentioned, like freeze dance and making your own musical instruments. And to bring us into that, we also have some resources that we at Reach Out and Read of Greater New York can provide for you. We have a summer camp that we called Rockin' Through the Summer, and this is a whole week full of musical themed activities for young kids. So you can check out our YouTube playlist um, to see all of the different activities, and a lot of it was making musical instruments. We had dance parties, um, a lot of the things that we've talked about this evening. And finally, we have a workshop that was hosted by our friends at Turtle Dance Music that looks at music and um, uh, what, what you can do with young children with music during quarantine. So lots of fun resources for you guys to check out. Ok, Kerry nos habla acerca de otros recursos adicionales. Ella dice que uno muy importante, muy bueno, es el Museo de Música, de Instrumentos de Música, que tiene una lista musical uh, que es muy buena y que también para aprender actividades musicales, especialmente para los niños, ¿no? Y ella da la dirección aquí <coughs> en el Internet. Ahora, ella uh, nos habla que hay unas actividades uh, muy divertidas para los niños también y que menciona ocho actividades musicales muy, muy, muy divertidas para los preescolares. Uh, la otra que ella menciona es el, uh, el rocking a través del, 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 del verano del campo de verano. Ella dice que se ha creado una semana entera donde lo único que se hace en este um, campo de verano son actividades musicales, eh, todas enfocadas hacia los niños. Y aquí tiene una, un ejemplo también en el internet por el YouTube. Ahora, finalmente ella nos recuerda de nuestro amigo oh, el el, 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 uh, la tortuga bailarina que hicimos una, un taller hace, hace varios, varios talleres hacia atrás, pero que esto también es muy divertido. All right. So that is it for this evening. Thank you so much for joining. Um, as always, we have all sorts of resources on our website um, that you can see here on this slide. Um, don't forget to check out our virtual summer camp. Even though technically it's over, all of the content is still there on our website and our YouTube channel. Um, and then be sure to check out Facebook um, for more videos and read alouds um, every weekday. And as always, feel free to email Michael for anything um, you'd like to see us uh, feature or cover. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Question.